My name is James Kuzmik. I'm a recent graduate of the University of Oregon with a master's in tuba performance. And today, we're going to be going over the tuba materials for the NAFME All-Northwest and OMEA All-State 2023 audition. All right, so we're going to be talking about four excerpts today, the first of which is a two-octave chromatic scale starting on the low G, an articulation study from Arben's Complete Method for Tuba, the opening line from Gustav Holst's First Suite in E-flat, the Chaconne, and the opening excerpt from Wagner's Die Meistersinger. I'm going to be playing through each of these excerpts for you today and then talking about how I would go about practicing them and things to look up for when you work on them for your audition. Something to keep in mind is to always practice with a metronome and a tuner on your stand so you can keep yourself honest and sound as great as possible. Let's get started. Just a quick note before we get started, I am playing on a C tuba, so all of my fingerings are gonna be for C fingering, so some, and many of you may be playing on a B flat tuba, so if you're watching my hand move as I'm playing and some of the fingerings don't make sense, that might be why, so just keep that in note as we go through the play along, thanks. For the chromatic scale, there are two things that you wanna focus on, time and tone. Let's start with time. Now it's marked at chord note equals 120 in legato, so what that means is they wanna hear um, each every chord note full length one into the other with a beautiful sound and it has to be at 120 which is quite brisk so if it's too fast for you to make it through without mistakes at 120 feel free to slow it down in your practice until you can do it and then slowly work up the tempo to the marked 120. Now with tone what they want to listen for and what you want to accomplish is have every sound every note you play have the same sound the same wonderful tone color and vibrance to it. So record yourself in advance when you're playing your chromatic scale to make sure all the notes sound even and not some are resonant and full and some are pinched and tight. So here's what it sounds like. Now for the Arbin articulation study. This is a tricky little study, uh, especially for the tuba, because one of the hardest things to do on tuba is play light and short and have a good crisp sound, much like a trumpet. So one way I practice this excerpt is wind patterning it on my hand. So if the rhythm is bum 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 bum, I'm gonna wind patter that on my hand. And the goal is to make every single um, articulation on my hand feel exactly the same with the air. And when I've accomplished that, I'm going to blow that into the tuba and you should see immediate results. And another important thing is this is marked at chord note equals 88, so don't forget to practice with the metronome. <laughs> Now for the Holst. Now this is probably one of the most iconic tuba solos in all of the band repertoire and every tuba player has played this or is going to play this a thousand times. So you gotta know what it sounds like. So first off it's marked Allegro Moderato which means moderately fast. So and a common mistake that you'll see young tuba players make is they go too slow. Which might not sound nice and pretty, but is not actually what's printed. So a comfortable flowing tempo that allows you to get through each four bar phrase in one breath as it is marked. Keep it soft, but not, not out of control soft where you can't get the notes to respond. You just want warm, colorful, and easy sounds. Here's what it sounds like. 
For the Holst, there is an option for a, a high or a low octave, and for this video, I will be playing both in two separate videos, so you can have a reference for both both can sound like, so just keep that in mind when you're playing the video that I do play this excerpt twice with both octaves. Thanks. <laughs> Now for the Wagner, probably the hardest excerpt on the list. So first off, we need to decipher what Ser Masik Bevicht means and Ser Gehalten means. What those two uh, markings mean are very moved and very held. So what the composer is indicating is he wants the piece to be moderately fast, keep it moving, don't drag, and also be very long. So very tenuto, each note touching each other. But with Wagner, we gotta make sure we have a lot of diction on each note, and you'll hear that when I play it for you. That's very long, but very enunciated. Another very important thing to keep track of when you're playing this is time. It's very easy to lose time in a lot of the eighth note runs and the quarter notes, because it's non-stop playing. So when you're practicing with your metronome marked between 92 and 112, which is kind of nice. I like putting it right in the middle, around 102, 100 ish time. Is make sure you're not losing any time on your best and you're keeping a nice, consistent sound all through the range, all through the whole excerpt, all the way to the end. <laughs> Thank you. 